In this video, I'm going to talk about a pressure regulator. I'm going to show you how to assemble it, put it together on a valve, and I'm also going to talk to you about why I'm using this today and why I think you need to think about using these in certain situations. Let me show you something. So I've got this pressure regulator, and that's what it is. It's just a little device, and it's going to regulate the pressure of my sprinkler system after it goes through my valve. Now this one is rated, you can see, for 40 PSI. And so no matter what the pressure is going in on this side, it's only going to be 40 PSI going on that side. And so these are very simple to assemble. And, and Well, it comes assembled like this, but to put it onto the valve, and, but it's a very good thing to use in, in definitely certain situations. I'm going to show you how to put it on this valve first. Now I've got a Rainbird DVF one inch valve. It's threaded. I put a one inch male adapter on this end. This is my incoming water, my inlet side. On the downhill side, I've got a Schedule 80 uh, one inch by two inch Schedule 80 nipple right here. And so I've got, you can see I've got the Teflon on there. I like to use Teflon. I wrap it five times clockwise around. And then all you do, this pressure regulator is threaded. It's a one inch, so it matches the same size that I have on everything here. And it simply just threads on. Now the biggest thing you want to pay attention to is the direction. These are a directional flow. And what I mean is flow is only meant to go through one direction. Now see if I can see if you can see that arrow it's a little blurry that arrow is telling me which way the water is going so if my water is coming this way I want to make sure that arrow is pointed that way and the flow is flowing this way that's the biggest tip to make sure when you're putting one of these and assembling it to your valve make sure you put it the right direction but it just simply screws onto that valve Make sure you don't cross thread it too. Get it hand tight, and that's what it's gonna look like. Now what I'll do, now I'm gonna take a male adapter. The male adapter is then gonna thread into this end. So I've got my male adapter, my Teflon tape. Around five times. Five is a good number four or five and then just thread it on there you want to be careful that you don't over tighten these fittings a lot of times what guys do is they'll over tighten it it ends up cracking these different fittings you want to make sure it's tight that way it does seal off if you can't get it too tight with your hands you can use a wrench but be very very careful it's really not recommended to put a wrench on any of these things and tighten them because that's where you have the tendency to over tighten it now I'm gonna to talk to you about why I'm putting a pressure regulator after this valve that I have here today. We're working at a house that the pressure is actually pretty high, surprisingly enough. In, in our town, the pressure is usually ends up being lower. because For whatever reason, the pressure is pretty high at this house. So for my drip zone that I've got, it's really necessary that I put this pressure regulator on to make sure that my drip zone doesn't exceed 40 PSI. Now, I used a 40 PSI, you can use a 30. I don't know that I would go much lower than that. I like 30 or 40. The drip fittings are rated for 40 PSI. So if I'm 40 PSI after this valve, and then going through various fittings and piping and stuff, it's gonna be a little bit lower than that by the time it's going through the drip system for our flower beds. So that's why I'm using this. And I wanna strongly recommend you guys that if you're installing sprinkler systems, when you're putting in a drip zone and the pressure is high, you really wanna regulate that pressure. Regulating the pressure at the valve is really a good place to do it. Another place you can do it is on the stub ups that where the drip, it's a drip transition point where the drip's gonna tie into a PVC pipe. You can put pressure regulators there if you don't want to regulate everything going through that system. Just at all those points, you can regulate it. But I do strongly recommend that you do some sort of pressure regulation on your drip zone. Because if it exceeds what that manufacturing on the drip, the fittings, the drip tubing, everything, if the pressure exceeds what they recommend, what's going to happen is those drip fittings are going to blow apart. And I see it all the time where people have them they're blowing apart and they'll put hose clamps and stuff to hold them together 
which works sometimes, but it's not solving the real problem. The problem is it's a pressure issue. You're too high on your pressure. So you can regulate it like I did with this pressure regulator right there on the valve. Now a lot of times what I'll do also is I'll put a Y filter, some sort of filtration on my drip zones too. This particular job, we're not going to do that. I'm not too worried about it. If I was on a well, I definitely would be putting some sort of filter, Y filter or something before my drip zones. That way it keeps any, any kind of sand or anything out of the drip. So that's another thing that you can do as well. Kelly Staggs here, American Irrigator, trying to make you a better irrigator. From a licensed irrigator to a licensed irrigator and homeowners alike. Consider subscribing, that way you don't miss any tips.